greetings, all you fine farm rendering folks. If your computer has a hard time handling some of the crazier scenes you throw at it, my online render farm of choice, Pixel Plan, has sponsored this tutorial, where I'm going to show you how to prep your C4D files for successful farm rendering of any kind. Finally, at the very end, I'll also show you how to upload and render specifically with Pixel Plan. First of all, I'm going to assume that you already have a scene which is more or less optimized. We do. We did it in the last tutorial. And this is it. The scene with our dude. And it's really using just about everything that you could possibly render. It's using X particles, it's using turbulence FD, it's using dynamics, it's using a little dude. And I've set it up that way to show you as many challenges as possible. So the first thing you need to do is to make sure that your render farm actually supports all the different plugins that you're using. In the case of Pixelplow, this is all the plugins and render engines that they support. And I'm sure they're working their butts off to get all of these to the latest version of Cinema 4D2. So let's get our teeth into the scene. Now the first thing you want to do with any scene is to cache and bake everything you can. That's because render farms split your render across many different nodes. That means that any effect that calculates its appearance based on the previous frame, like dynamics where things move and collide, needs to be baked. Otherwise things are going to be jittering and jump around between your frames. And you don't want that. So I will start by baking my dynamics. Now, everything around the asteroid here is dynamics. All this little debris is slowly moving around and colliding with each other. I'm going to go into either select all of those dynamics tags under cache and hit bake object. Or what I'm actually going to do is hit control or command D to bring up project settings. Under dynamics, go to cache and hit bake. All right, that gives me 15 seconds to say that I've just finished writing the ebook for the process of motion. If you've joined already, you'll get it for free within a couple of weeks. If you haven't joined yet, that means you've still got a couple of weeks before the work in progress price goes up to full price. If you want to know what the f I'm talking about, visit processofmotion.com. There. Now, next up is to do the exact same thing with your particles. And I've got both X particles in my scene and standard particles. The standard particles literally don't do anything. They're just shooting out into empty space over here on the left side of this asteroid. But I'm just going to have those in here to show you how to bake them. It's real simple. You just select your emitter. You go up under simulate particles and there's an option for bake particles. And that allows you to bake the particles. All right, that's done for us now. Now let's do the same for our X particles. You're going to need to create an X particle cache and that's automatically set to include all your emitters in your scene. I've only got the one. But then there's two different ways to cache your files. Cache type number one is the internal memory method where you simply build the cache, it calculates it and stores all that data inside of the Cinema 4D file. This is probably the easiest and safest way to do it because you know that wherever the Cinema 4D files go, the cache is going to follow with them. So of course, I'm going to show you the other way instead. Where under cache type, you select external, where you actually write your files to a specific location on your hard drive. So I'm going to pick my folder here. And once again, just hit build cache and overwrite the old one that I just made. And we'll get back to that one when it's a bit of a troublemaker later on. So those are the obvious things baked. But you actually need to bake a few deformers as well. For example, my precious jiggle deformer, which we've got on our dude who's over here, just jiggling all over the place. That also needs to be baked. Otherwise, it's going to calculate incorrectly when it's spread across several nodes. And again, there's two different ways to bake any deformer. One is to simply select the deformer and hit calculate for the ones that support that. And it's going to calculate from start to finish your entire scene and however it jiggles within that scene. That's option one. Sometimes you might run into a situation where a deformer doesn't have the cache tab, in which case you can always add a point cache tag to your object. And you can find that tag under rigging tags, point cache. It used to live under character tags. And to make that work, you simply hit the store state button and then you hit the calculate button and it's going to do the same thing. It's going to calculate your mesh and how it deforms from the start to the finish of your scene. And now that you have that cached, you actually need to turn off your deformers. Otherwise, it adds another round of jiggle on top. 
because obviously it's already cached the initial jiggle and there's still a jiggle deformer there that's jiggling the jiggle while the jiggle jiggles. Let's turn those off. Now finally, if you have a lot of MoGraph stuff in your scene, you should also bake that. All the MoGraph stuff I have are on these little debris bits, which is already baked through Dynamics. But if I didn't have it baked through Dynamics, I would simply go into Tags, select a MoGraph tag, and select the MoGraph cache. And again, just hit Bake, and it will calculate that MoGraph object and store that. Now that's nearly it for the baking. The very final thing I'm going to bake is actually my camera of all things. And that's because I'm using a camera setup that I'm going to show how to make in the next tutorial. That's using a constraint tag set to spring. So that's another thing that definitely needs to be baked. And that one doesn't have a cache option. So for this sort of thing, you're going to have to do a straight to keyframes bake. And you do that by opening up your timeline, selecting the object you want to bake, going under function and selecting bake objects. And then you check the parameters that you need and hit OK. Since I've got the create copy checked, it's going to bake my camera and then create a copy of the camera, which is now baked. And look at that. Now we have a lovely camera with a lovely set of keyframes as well. So I'm going to jump into that camera. Make sure that's the one that's going to be used for rendering. And speaking of rendering, it's time for us to do a couple of test renders. First of all, let's make sure that I've got all the different render passes that I want in Arnold. They're called AOVs and it looks like they're all in there all my passes and all my object buffers. And then I will go through my scene and select a few representative frames, as Pixelplat calls it. And those are just frames that are typical of the scene. The mistake many people do is just to render the first frame of their scene and assume that that render time is going to be typical for all the frames in their scene. You done messed up, AA Ron! For this scene, for example, the very first frame only has the asteroid very tiny and in the middle of the frame, and the rest is just a background image. Whereas towards basically everything from a third of the way through, it's just full of the asteroid, full of the smoke. And then of course we have our little dude with loads of subsurface scattering on. So I'm going to pick a few frames from various points in the timeline and do test renders of those. Watch this. Okay, so from those test renders, I've figured out that my average frame in the scene is going to take about six minutes to render. And from that, Pixelplow lets me figure out how much the total render is going to cost me. If I just go to pixelplow.net slash pricing, I can enter the number of frames in my scene, average render time per frame, and a couple of details about my computer. And it figures out how much the total render is going to cost me depending on how much power I want to give it. And this is just an estimate, but I think around $2 is very reasonable for a 150 frame scene with all of this crap in. So I'm going to start packaging that up now. I'm going to go to File and Save Project with Assets. And then pick a folder to save that whole project with all of those assets. And Cinema 4D is just going to rummage through my computer and collect all the assets that are linked in the entire scene. And if we have a look in that folder that Cinema 4D just created, there they are, in a bit of a mess. All the textures are in a texture folder, which makes sense enough, and then there's the Cinema 4D file and a bunch of BCF files. And that is because I've used Turbulence. And those are my Turbulence FD cache files. So we're not quite done yet. To make Turbulence work, we need to do another step. First of all, I'm going to delete all of these, because in this state, they're not very useful for me. And then I'm going to find the original TFD cache that my turbulence container uses. And it's just right here in a neighboring folder. And I'm going to copy that and paste it in to my freshly collected project folder. And then I need to go back into my file, select my turbulence containers, and change the path to my simulation cache from this long absolute path that it has to simply full stop forward slash. And then it looks for the turbulence cache in the same location that the Cinema 4D file is saved. And there it is. So just select that one. And then I also need to do the same thing for my X particles cache. And that's why I wanted to use an external cache so I could show you this as well. And again, I'm going to go into the folder where I have that cache, copy it and paste it to the collected project folder. Go back into my Cinema 4D file, 
to my XP cache object and change this long absolute path to just be full stop forward slash and the name of the cache folder. The next particles is just going to look for that cache in the local folder. So now I'm going to save and now everything is ready to be uploaded. Just going to do one final check. First of all, check that all the outputs are correct. The resolution is correct. Frame range, I want all frames. For pixel plow, this doesn't matter because you set that later. Same thing with the output path. Some online farms require this to be completely empty except for a file name. But again, pixel plow, you choose your own outputs in their interface. And all my Arnold render settings are also correct. Finally, I want to check to see if I'm using the camera I want to render from. And actually, I'm not. Let me just set that to the right one and hit save and launch the pixel plow agent. So this is the main pixel plow interface. To submit a job, you click submit job. Pick your version of Cinema 4D, choose a scene file, find the scene file that you want to render. And then you get to this little page of options. First of all, the frame list, quite important, because that's where you say which frames you want to render. I want to render frame 0, 250. And then I'm going to set my power level. The lowest power level is super cheap and the highest power level is super fast. It basically just sets how high of a priority your job is going to be compared to the other ones on the render farm and how many nodes it's going to use. But you also have the option of setting a specific budget and then selecting the auto power mode. And it's just going to use the maximum power without costing more than the budget you've set. You just pick a folder to render to file name to call your vendors and then all you do is hit submit and Pixelplow just starts uploading that and now all I have to do is just lean back and sleep very well tonight knowing that my own computer is not gonna melt. So once again thank you to Pixelplow for sponsoring this video and all the rendering I had to do for the process of motion. With 54 animated lectures and a case study project like this there was a lot of it. If you want to learn about the creative, client and process side of motion, join the course at processofmotion.com. But for now, I just want to thank you for your time. And until next time, happy renders and stay in motion. <laughs>